Welcome back my nerds. So today we are talking about muscle contraction and how the cross ridge cycling actually works. Before we can get into the hypertrophy workings, we first need to learn how muscle contracts. Obviously, we use muscle contractions within our workout to elicit a kind of response that furthermore elicits hypertrophy itself. So, before we can talk about hypertrophy, we first need to talk about how muscle actually... So, the classical view of muscle contraction starts at the nervous system. An impulse from the nervous system travels along into the alpha motor neuron that releases acetylcholine. That acetylcholine is picked up by the fiber, the muscle fiber, that depolarizes the muscle membrane. That depolarization travels along the T2 into the sarcoplastic reticulum. That's where the, all the calcium ions are stored. Those calcium ions are released. They go into the sarcolemma. In the sarcolemma, they bind to troponin and that pulls back tropomyosin, exposing all the binding sites for acting to bind to myosin, or in this case, for the myosin heads to bind to actin. Now, myosin actually loves actin. Myosin, the myosin heads always want to bind to actin. It's just that the actin filament is protected by tropomyosin, which is a filament-like protein structure that covers the binding sites for actin. But while it's not actually attached to actin, the myosin heads actually flail around, looking for binding sites to attach themselves to actin. Furthermore, we have four stages of the cross ridge cycling. So this is where we start to reverse engineer the cross bridge cycling and this is where the the biophysics the heavy science stuff start to come in and really bring to light what actually happens when muscle contracts so the cross bridge cycling starts off at the rigor stage the rigor stage is where the myosin head is the strong is the strongest in terms of its its uh, attachment strength uh, bind to actin. So in this stage the myosin head is strongly bind to actin and then ATP comes in and the the detaches the myosin head from the actin filament and we go in the, into the post rigor or the recovery phase. After that we get into the pre-stroke or the, um, the transition before excuse me the transition between the the, the recovery phase and the pre-stroke, we get ATP hydrolysis, which turns ATP into ADP and inorganic phosphate. After that, we go into the pre-stroke, where the myosin head has ADP and inorganic phosphate. And that's where it's looking for a binding site for actin. And provided that the calcium ions have made their job, the, the myosin head can now attach itself to the actin filament and then we get the stroke phase and after that the, phos the inorganic phosphate and the ADP get released. So now we get into the myosin head structure. So the myosin head has an upper region and a lower region. And if you can imagine, you can think of it of two ways actually. You can, I imagine it's like a little Pac-Man head actually with an upper region and a lower region. And the upper region is also called the upper 50 KD, KDA, and the lower region is the central body. And if you can imagine, there's an axis of rotation, which is called the beta sheet. We get a P-loop on the, a P-loop structure on the central body, and in the upper blade or the upper region, we get shift one. So one thing to know is that the myosin head has a really strong affinity for actin in its close conformation and a lower affinity in its open conformation. And the ATP's job is actually to open up 
the myosin head and detach the myosin when it's in the rigor state from the actin. So what happens is that the ATP has a strong affinity for the P-loop structure and also a good or a great affinity for the switch one. And what happens is that when they are closed, when the myosin head is closed, the P-loop and switched one are further apart. And when the ATP comes in into the myosin head, it starts to attach itself to the P-loop and starts to pull back the switch one, opening up the myosin head in about 13 degrees or so of opening. And that opening of, of the head actually detaches the myosin head from the actin filament and we get into the recovery phase where we have the myosin head and the ATP. After that, we get ATP hydrolysis within the myosin head by the ATPase and now the myosin head has ADP and inorganic phosphate and now it's fully ready to attach itself to the actin filament. And now it's where the real fun stuff comes up. So at this stage there's a really cool effect that is related to the entropy of water. So if you can imagine the actin and the myosin are suspended in fluid, in this case water, in the muscle fiber. So the entropy of water around the actin filament has to rise in order for the myosin head to attach itself to the actin filament. This higher state of entropy by water is actually accomplished by the actin filament which has or produces an electric field around it which turns the water, a couple of rows of water around them, it turns it into what we call hypermobile water which is simply put a state of um, higher entropy in the, that the water itself, the water molecules actually have a greater rotational spin ratio than the bulk water or the more stale water. And for my nerds out there, the electric field generated by the actin filament actually travels as far as one nanometer around the actin filament and its strength is about 10 to the 8 volt meter. Now that part might not be that important or might not mean anything to you, but what should be important is, is that you understand that that generated higher entropy of water is actually very important because the myosin head, if the water is in a lower state of entropy, it can form like a protective shell around actin. So in the lower rotational ratio of water or in the low hypermobile water, water can actually interact a lot better with itself and create a protective shield of hydration or around the actin filament and that interferes with the myosin head ability to form hydrogen bonds between itself and the actin filament. So now with actin, with its electrical field, keeping water hypermobile, the myosin head actually wants to start and release the inorganic phosphate from the, to, in through, through the back tunnel. So, but in its conformation, with itself not attached to the actin filament, the tunnel, the backdoor tunnel for the release of phosphate is actually a lot more narrow. So we call it the closed state of the tunnel. And the diffusion rate in that state is very low. So the myosin head attaches itself to the actin and then we get an isomeration of the myosin head. That basically means that its structure, the way it, uh, it's, it's arranged, actually changes and that allows for the tunnel, the inorganic phosphate tunnel, to open up and start to release inorganic phosphate. While this is happening, the isomeration, remember that now myosin is actually attached to actin, so its isomeration actually changes the actin itself and it's a couple of promoters 
that are on the back side of the myosin head. So if you can imagine, we have the myosin head, we have a front side and a back side. And when the myosin head attaches itself to the actin, which is not a rigid filament, is actually uh, pliable. And upon myosin isomeration and its interaction with the actin filament, it also changes the structure of actin and the back promoters on the back side of the myosin head actually lower their, their electric field current and the water on the back side of the myosin head becomes a more bulky water. It turns in, uh, that water into a less hypermobile water due to the lack of the, the electric field current. Now with this setup we get basically a solvation free energy gradient or a difference in the solvation free energy of the myosin head which is the solute between the front end of the myosin head and in the back end. So what happens is that upon this attachment it creates a change in the electric field of the back end of the, the actin and that creates a gradient of uh, solvation free energy that wants to pull and in fact pulls the myosin head forward into a lower state of energy which is where it wants to go and doing that while that uh, uh, I should say while that is happening the inorganic phosphate is diffusing itself through the back door only problem with that is that the in that configuration in the version of the myosin head in which the backdoor tunnel for the inorganic phosphate is open it in that state it has a lower affinity for actin so in, in a, it's inevitable that it will detach itself from the actin at some point while it's traveling forward and pushing the actin back towards the M line although it detaches itself and upon that the inorganic phosphate tunnel actually closes again and it's no longer in its isomeration form when it's attached to actin and although it's now free we still have a uh, gradient of uh, solute or solution free energy that pulls keeps pulling the myosin head forward and it attaches itself in a more forward position and that cycle keeps going on until the inorganic phosphate is released and the cycle is complete. So we get the myosin head attaches itself to the actin that changes its structure and the actin structure that changes the electric field in the back end of the myosin head that creates a um, solvation free energy gradient which pulls the myosin head forward. That pulling forward of the myosin head pulls back the actin towards the M line but inevitably it detaches itself because it's in a weak binding mode when, it, when uh, the inorganic phosphate tunnel is open. Upon that breakage it goes forward, it follows the, the free energy gradient into the lower state of energy and it attaches itself and that whole cycle continues until the inorganic phosphate is completely basically free and now we get the myosin head attached to the actin with only ADP. After that the ADP is released basically and we go into the rigor state again where the whole cycle begins once more. So I hope you liked the video. Please remember that all of the references are in the video description. You can check out all the papers and double check my research. Please subscribe to the channel, leave a like and I will see you in the next video.